Focusing on the steering wheel that is on the selected face, notice how it is not displayed fully and only the primary axis and origin are visible. This is because in ST2 the steering wheel has a progressive display behaviour and will initially look slightly different depending on what has been selected. Since we have only selected a single face in this model, it is assumed that the most common action would be to try and move the face using the primary axis. If we move the cursor onto the primary axis, notice how a glyph appears next to the cursor to show this. The full steering wheel is then displayed once it has been manipulated in some way as shown. Now that it is fully displayed, notice that the primary and secondary axes have been swapped relative to the torus or plane of the steering wheel, and the plane lies perpendicular to the selected face instead of coincident with it as it used to be in ST1. The reason for this is so that less steps are required in order to correctly position the steering wheel in order to rotate a face. As this slide shows, we are now likely to see four different types of steering wheel dependent on the type of geometry that has been selected. We have the 3D face tool, which then transforms into the full 3D steering wheel when manipulated. We also have the cylinder tool. This will appear when a cylindrical surface or a hole is selected. The plane will be coincident with the top of the hole to make moving it easier. Finally, we have the 2D steering wheel. This will appear when selecting geometry that only requires editing within a single plane. This includes things such as patterns, sheet metal thickness faces, 2D sections and more. Going back to our model, we can see some of the different steering wheel types as we select different areas. If we select this face, we get a 3D face tool that would allow us to start moving the face. If we then manipulate the steering wheel in some way, we get the full steering wheel. If we select a hole, we get a 2D steering wheel that allows the hole to be moved around in the correct plane. If we select this live section geometry, we get a slightly different 2D steering wheel that allows the live section to manipulate the model. As said already, the main change with the 3D steering wheel is that it is rotated 90 degrees out of the orientation used in the initial release of ST. If you need to quickly flip the orientation, simply hold down the shift key and click on the plane as shown. The live rules panel within a synchronous part has been updated and the different geometric conditions are now shown as icons rather than text. This saves room in the panel. Also the live rule settings are now global and session based. If changes are made, next time Solid Edge starts, they go back to the initial default settings. During a synchronous move, the icons for any detected relationships are highlighted by showing their shortcut text in bold. If relationships are found in the model, and that condition is not set in the Live Rules panel, then they will be highlighted in red. The local symmetry option has been moved from the advanced live rules area onto the main live rules panel for easier access. This makes it much faster to define a local symmetry plane during a synchronous move. In addition to this, options to keep geometry aligned to the global or a user defined axis have been added. This will be covered in more detail later. Moving back to the Live Rules panel, it is now possible to pause a synchronous move partway through an edit to investigate exactly what is changing. This is done by either hitting the Pause button in the Live Rules panel, or by using a keyboard shortcut which is the V key. When Pause is active, the model may be rotated to see the impact of the change. Any faces that are being moved will be shown in the half highlight colour. In this case, this is light blue. The face being moved and its original position is shown in the dark green colour. Also during a paused edit, only the PMI dimensions that are affected will be displayed. Hovering over a dimension will show the original value in the status bar at the bottom of the screen.
To continue on with the edit, simply hit play or hit the V key on the keyboard again. As we mentioned before, some new methods have been implemented which make it easier to maintain hole alignment when performing synchronous moves. If we select a hole which has other holes aligned with it in the direction of any of the global axes, then ensure the coplanar axis options are set in the Live Rules panel, their alignment will be maintained as shown here. If we have a series of holes that are not aligned with the global axes, it is possible to maintain their alignment. This is done with the User to Find option. After selecting the hole, set in the orientation of the primary axis and then initiating the move, we can select the Custom Axis command in the Live Rules panel, then select one of the other holes. This will then automatically find all the holes that lie on the same axis and maintain them in alignment as shown.